टूडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज ड्रग थेरापी फॉर हार्ट फेलियर पार्ट टू हेलो एंड वेलकम टू फार्मेकोमेनिया एम डॉक्टर शहनाज मलिक एंड वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस फार्मेकोथेरापी फॉर हार्ट फेलियर पार्ट टू सो वॉट इज हार्ट फेलियर हार्ट फेलियर इज द कंडीशन वेर हार्ट इज अनेबल टू पंप आउट सफिशियंट अमाउंट ऑफ द ब्लड टू मेट मेटाबोलिक डिमांड ऑफ द टिश्यू एंड ऑल्सो अनेबल टू रिसीव बैक बिकॉज एवरी टाइम इच सिस्टोल सम रेसिडल ब्लड रिमेन इन द वेंटिकल नाउ गोल ऑफ फार्मेकोथेरापी इन द हार्ट फेलियर इज एम टू एट डैमेजिंग द compensatory mechanism of low cardiac output failure and also improving contractility of heart relief congestion low cardiac output symptoms and restore cardiac performance and arrest or reversal of disease progression or prolongation of the survival these are the goals for the pharmacotherapy now there are two group for drug therapy for heart failure are first is the positive inotropic drug and another group drugs are uh, drug without uh, inotropic effect in positive inotropic drugs are cardiac glycosides bipyridine or phosphodiesterase inhibitor and beta adrenergic agonist these all drug are positive inotropic drug another group is drug without inotropic effect are vasodilator ac inhibitor diuretic beta blocker and vasopressor receptor blockers inotropic drugs are like uh, digoxin phosphodiesterase inhibitor and beta adrenergic agonist these all drug are positive inotropic drug increase contractility of heart and increase cardiac output we have already discussed um, uh, cardiac glycoside in part 1 now we are going to discuss other group of the positive inotropic Uh, drugs are phosphodiesterase inhibitors and beta agonist uh, so in phosphodiesterase inhibitors drugs are in emrinone melrinone and levosimend these three drug are phosphodiesterase inhibitor group drug now mechanism of action of uh, phosphodiesterase three enzyme inhibitors are it inhibit phosphodiesterase three which are located at the cardiac myocytes and vascular smooth muscle so it inhibit degradation of cyclic amp to amp so increase concentration of cyclic amp in the cardiac smooth muscle and vascular smooth muscle cause is it increase the myocardial contractility and vasodilatation occur now adverse effect of um, in embrinone or nausea vomiting dose dependent thrombocytopenia arrhythmia ventricular rate may uh, increases in patient with atrial flutter and fibrillation so it is toxic drug and melrinone is also toxic but lesser than in embrinone so it is safer than in embrinone so potentiate arrhythmia occur with in chf patient a renal impaired patient prolong the plasma half life of the melrinone and minor side effects are like uh, headache and tremor can occur due to melrinone now levosimendan like it is also like uh, melrinone it also inhibit phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme and vasodilatation occur it also sensitize contractile mechanism of the cardiac smooth muscle to calcium and anoximone is also another congener of in emrinone given intravenously in case of case of acute failure as with uh, uh, in emrinone there is risk of development of arrhythmia but uh, it is better tolerate and uh, improve physical mobility and quality of life uh, in th- this kind of patient now uses of phosphodiesterase inhibitor melrinone uh, used intravenously in acute as well as exacerbated heart failure on short term basis and patient with symptom and sign of low cardiac output and those who fail to respond to intravenous diuretics in some cases melrinone may help to maintain patients awaiting cardiac transplant transplantation 
Now, beta adrenergic agonist drugs are dobutamine and dopamine. This drug act through beta adrenergic receptor. Now, mechanism of action of beta adrenergic receptors. Uh, whenever beta 1 adrenergic receptor are stimulated, causes increased cyclic AMP by ATP, and this cyclic AMP stimulate activation of protein kinase enzyme. This protein kinase enzyme act on slow calcium channel and then phosphorylated protein kinase act on uh, increase the flow of calcium into myocardial cell and increase force of conduction. Tobitamine, uh, it is more selective inotropic than chronotropic effect and without significant change in peripheral resistance and blood pressure it act through selectively beta agonist receptor and its half life is 2 minute uh, so it is given intravenous infusion 5 to 10 microgram per kg per minute is its dose and steady state concentration are achieved within 10 minute of IV infusion so it is used for short term management of acute heart failure and patient with myocardial infarction and cardiac surgery so dopamine increase cardiac output and increase urinary output and stop volume without affecting heart rate total peripheral resistance and blood pressure being an inotropic agent it increase myocardial oxygen demand and Angina may precipitate it or may MI may aggravate it. Tolerance may develop after repeated use. Since uh, drug increase atrial uh, ventricular conduction, it should be used with caution with atrial fibrillation. It increases blood pressure, so it should be avoided in patient uh, having history of hypertension. Now dopamine. Dopamine is also positive anotropic drug and it acts on various receptor and causes various actions. So first of all, at lower doses, it acts as a diuretic substance at 2 to 5 microgram per kg per minute. It acts on D1 receptor on the kidney, causes dilatation of uh, renal vessel and increase GFR and renal blood flow and improve urinary output. Second dose is therapeutic dose and it is 5 to 10 microgram per kg per minute. It stimulate beta 1 receptor on the heart and increase cardiac output but total peripheral resistance is unchanged. Now high dose of dopamine is the 10 microgram per kg per minute is activate alpha 1 receptor of the blood vessel causes vasoconstriction and increase total peripheral resistance and pulmonary pressure. This may nullify the beneficial effect of dopamine. So, dopamine should be used in lower or medium doses of the dopamine and should avoid it in higher doses in heart failure condition. Now, drugs without positive inotropic effects are diuretic drug, uh, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, beta blockers, vasodilators, and vasopressin receptor antagonists. These all drugs are without positive inotropic effects. So first group without positive inotropic drug are diuretics. Diuretics drug contain various uh, subgroups like uh, loop diuretic drugs are bidesonide and furosemide. Aldosterone antagonism agonists are spironolactone and aplirinone. Thiazide diuretics are hydrochlorothiazide and metalazone. These all are diuretic but different group of diuretics. Now first group is loop diuretic. Drugs are bidesonide and furosemide. There are two major effects due to diuresis. First is it promptly reduce pulmonary edema due to rapid diuresis and which result in decrease in extracellular fluid. Second one is decreased venous return and subsequent decrease in right ventricular output. So this reduction uh, have two useful effects. First is uh, reduction in edema and second one is reduction in cardiac size which lead to improvement in pump efficacy. Now there are some drawbacks of use of diuretics are it enhance 
urinary loss of sodium and water there is a risk Uh, resultant increased urinary excretion of hydrogen and potassium which may lead to arrhythmia and enhanced digitalis toxicity uh, another potential arrhythmia can occur due to exacerbated uh, loss of magnesium and calcium uh, now another group is uh, aldosterone antagonist uh, it is potassium sparing diuretic uh, drugs are spironolactone and aplirinone such drawback of uh, loop diuretic are like um, electrolyte imbalance which can be overcome by adding aldosterone antagonist so combination of loop diuretic and potassium sparing diuretic can cause improve the survival of patient in addition to spironolactone digitalis and addition uh, se inhibitors significantly improve survival of patient in chronic uh, heart failure now spironolactone is being aldosterone antagonist it enhance excretion of sodium and water and uh, retain potassium and prevent uh, myocardial as well as vascular fibrosis which is responsible for pathological remodeling of heart and gynecomastia is the adverse effect of spironolactone in the male patient thiazide diuretic uh, like hydrochlorothiazide and metolazone are less useful in heart failure in advanced uh, congestive heart failure after chronic use of loop diuretic resistance may develop in such condition hydrochlorothiazide or metolazone or spironolactone may be added with diuretic to overcome resistance for mild heart failure hydrochlorothiazide plus spironolactone can be given in refractory heart failure chlorothalidone can be useful as a thiazide type of diuretic so next group is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors drugs are enalapril lisinopril and remipril so angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors are now considered as a first choice drug in heart failure and this drug not only block the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 enzyme but it also prevent the breakdown of bradykinin which promote vas promote vasodilatation and reduce afterload Uh, they also decrease aldosterone secretion and reduce salt and water retention decrease venous return and preload so decrease uh, preload and afterload causes improved cardiac output se inhibitor causes natriuresis not only by inhibiting secretion of aldosterone but by reducing angiotensin 2 induce reabsorption of sodium and bicarbonate in early part of proximal convoluted tubule most important it prolong survival of by preventing pathological remodeling of heart and blood vessel and adverse consequences of heart failure it reduces death rate due to arrhythmias myocardial infarction and stroke and it is very useful in decreasing the effect of left ventricular damage dysfunction in patient of Hello. chf whose ejection ventricular Hello. fraction is less than 35% all ace inhibitor have similar pharmacodynamic profile and are interchangeable in their clinical uses in congestive heart failure or myocardial infarction so enalapril lisinopril and remipril the doses are almost similar 2.5 mg to 10 mg Angi angiotensin receptor blockers are losartan and valsartan they appear to have similar to ac inhibitor but limited beneficial effect ac inhibitors are first line therapy uh, but in some condition where patient are intolerant to ac inhibitor start suffering from troubling cough or angioedema due to rise in bradykinin level and in this condition Uh, angiotensin receptor blocker are better substitute ac inhibitor are contraindicated during pregnancy where angiotensin receptor blocker are drug of choice now vasodilators are arterial dilator like hydralazine 
venous dilator like nitroglycerin and longer acting nitrates arteriolar as well as venous dilator is sodium nitroprusside vasodilators reduces pulmonary congestion increase cardiac output and reduce preload and afterload they are useful in acute heart failure and provide reduction in preload by uh, venodilator decrease afterload by arterial dilator or both they also prevent remodeling of heart in patient of heart failure with dyspnea venodilator like nitroglycerin or longer acting nitrates are preferred because they reduces filling pressure and ultimately pulmonary congestion and patient having low left ventricular output arterial dilator can be used like hydralazine and it increase cardiac output patient having severe chronic failure present with both symptoms elevated filling pressure and reduced cardiac output in such condition benefited by such patients are benefited by combination of hydralazine to reduce afterload and longer acting nitrate to reduce preload the combination is useful in patient uh, in whom ac inhibitor are contraindicated and or not tolerated this combination also prolongs survival and reduce remodeling of heart now beta blockers like metoprolol bisoprolol carvedilol and uh, nebivolol these or all are cardio selective beta blocker and uh, this can be used in congestive cardiac failure now uh, beta blockers are useful in mild to moderate high, uh, heart failure long term therapy with uh, beta blocker improves symptoms reduces hospitalization and decrease mortality in patient with mild to moderate heart failure exact mechanism is not clear but uh, it can say that uh, beta blocker block the beta receptor so reduce the effect of circulating catecholamine which are released during anxiety and apprehension at the time of the heart failure the it is improve the left ventricular uh, structure and function decrease wall stress increase ejection fraction and decrease left ventricular size so beta blocker decrease apoptosis ventricular remodeling and slow down the progression of disease they also decrease frequency of arrhythmias and antioxidant effect of carvedilol also contribute to beneficial effect therapy with beta blocker in heart failure should be under careful supervision because they should not be used in decompensated heart failure neseritide is natriuretic peptide and it is used in patient with acutely decompensated heart failure associated with dyspnea at rest the dose of neseritide is shorter half life 18 minute and it is administered as bolus dose of 2 microgram per kg and followed by iv infusion of 0.01 to 0.03 microgram per kg per minute it has greater effect than the nitroglycerin in induced pulmonary capillary vase pressure and systemic vascular resistance hypotension is the most common adverse effect of neseritide vasopressin receptor antagonist conibeptan and tolbeptan conibeptan is mixed v1 as well as v2 receptor antagonist which has recently approved for patient having acute heart failure with hyponatremia the dose of conibeptan is intravenous loading dose 20 mg over 30 minute followed by 20 mg iv infusion over 24 hours now tolbeptan is for oral use it is v2 antagonist dose is 15 to 45 mg per day 
uh, although being beneficial they do not seems reduce mortality so their long term benefit are doubtful thank you for watching the video